simply state your command. New entry, Cordelia, personal. Subject, Avalis Day. After many years, the restoration of Bakunawa is almost complete. Just in time for the anniversary of our landing on this planet. Avalis Day. Thinking about how far we've come makes me so proud to be an Earth Dragon. When we first crash-landed here, the natives didn't even have a name for this planet, much less the tools and technology to properly explore and utilize its resources. Now look at us. We have proper cities alight with modern conveniences, medicines and technological advancements for all. We've even put those ocean dwellers to work on Bakunawa, lifting them out of their primitive tribal ways. Avalis Day will be a grand celebration. End entry. New entry, Cordelia, personal. Subject, Bakunawa Rising. Bakunawa is now undergoing a full evaluation of the ship's systems. We are weeks away from having a fully functional spacecraft again. This is so exciting. However, I'm sad to report that not everyone shares in that excitement. There have been rumblings of dissatisfaction from the laborers working on Bakunawa's restoration, complaining about long hours and dangerous conditions. I think it's just a bunch of backtalk from some people who've had it too good for too long. My maid Perlis agrees, and she's one of them. Fortunately, she's one of the good ones. Spirits know some of these ocean dwellers need to learn their place. End entry. New entry, Cordelia, personal. Subject, Bakunawa abandoned. Something went wrong. We think it was an accident. I really don't know what to believe right now. The Bakunawa Restoration Project has been shut down. The Ocean Dwellers are angry. All of them. Perlis is gone, and so have all our other Ocean Dweller servants. When I asked Father where they went, he insisted that they'd taken time off to celebrate some kind of holiday. He wouldn't look at me when he told me that. When I asked about what happened with Bakunawa, he told me to mind my own business. Subject, Ocean Dweller Rumors. There's been talk of some kind of new threat arising from the Ocean Dwellers. A champion of immeasurable power, biologically engineered for war. I don't know how substantial these rumors are, but given their current level of righteous descent, I wouldn't dismiss their ability to craft such a beast. Father is convinced that we've run out of options for dealing with these savages. If that's the case, then there isn't much time left. I have to act without his permission. I will leave the capital and head for Perusa to negotiate some kind of peace with the Ocean Dwellers. Surely they'll listen to reason. We're all living on this planet together after all. End entry. New entry, Cordelia, personal. Subject, trapped. My Ocean Dweller hosts have decided that, as the Magister's daughter, I would be more useful to them as a hostage. Marvelous. The nature of my imprisonment was discussed in a meeting between the Ocean Dweller's elders and I, by which I mean, I was present while a bunch of old men talked about me as if I wasn't there. It was several minutes before I realized what I'd assumed was a statue was actually another living being. But I knew who it had to be. The Ocean Dweller's champion. She was tall, dark, imposing, and she was staring directly at me the entire time. It was unsettling. Oh, Cordelia, what have you gotten yourself into? End of dream. New entry Cordelia, personal. Subject? Her name is Murga. Well, I know the champion's name. Murga. 
She told me, after telling me that if I was planning any Earth Dragon shenanigans, she'd take my head clean off. Apparently, the champion had the impression that my people were all schemers and liars. She based this on a sampling of everyone she had ever killed. Charming. Champion or not, I was not about to be intimidated. So I told her that if my people were as she generalized, then hers must be equally psychologically homogenous, meaning they were all as stupid as her. That earned me a glare before she stormed off. <laughs> I win. Such a child. End entry. New entry, Cordelia, personal. Subject, Attack of the Chopau Hog. I decided to take a wander to the markets for some fresh Chopau for my favorite stall. And who should be there ahead of me? The champion, of course. Apparently, my favorite stall was hers too. And of course, she had to have it all. She needs all the energy she can get. Oh, but she can spare just one Chopau. So she picks one out of her bag and lays it on top of my head. Then, with the biggest smirk on her face, she stalked off, and the market crowd parted for her in a frightened scurry. Ugh, that woman! End entry. New entry, Cordelia, personal. Subject, no place for a hero. There was an attack by Earth Dragon forces on the beach today. The champion swooped in and simply destroyed the troops. It was ruthlessly efficient. Unfortunately, an ocean dweller child had been caught in the middle of the battle, and his cries summoned nearby adults, and they just stared. They saw the child in pain, but refused to come any closer. The champion tried to comfort the child, but that only seemed to make his crying worse. Eventually, she left, and the adults rushed in. As the champion turned away, I could see the expressions of relief wash over their faces, and one of her hurt flash over hers. End entry. New entry, Cordelia, personal, subject, Revenge of the Chopau. The champion was injured today, so despite her appearance, she isn't invincible after all. I stopped by the medical center as she was healing up. She was surprised to see me, and I said the feeling was mutual. Then I offered her a Chopau. One Chopau. Out of a basket filled with Chopau that I was lugging around for emphasis. I have never seen a flatter stare. She took it anyway and mumbled something that sounded halfway between a thanks and a curse. I was happy to reciprocate with my own charming banter, and she could do nothing but glare at me from her bed. It was a fun afternoon. End entry. New entry. Cordelia. Personal. Subject. Flowers for Murga. Unexpectedly, the champion has an interest in flowers. I was wearing a small white flower with a delightful scent in my hair, when Murga identified it as a Sampagita. It turns out that amongst the many things Murga was taught, horticulture had somehow been snuck in there as well. When I asked if she knew the name of more than one flower, she took immediate offense and dragged me to the nearest garden. She then started listing the names of the flowers there and their uses. I didn't have the heart to interrupt her. I've never seen her as happy as she was today. I like seeing her happy. End entry. New entry, Cordelia, personal. Subject, our fight. I tried broaching the subject of peace to Murga again tonight. She wasn't happy to talk about it and tried to distract me. I pointed out that if she and I could get along, why couldn't our people as well? She said it was impossible, that I was one of the good ones. I stormed out. I was rather furious at that point, mostly at myself. Well, now I know what being on this side of that comparison feels like. Stupid Cordelia. Marga found me later with some freshly picked moonflowers in hand and an apology. She knew exactly what to do and say. And a dream. New entry, Cordelia, personal.
personal. Subject, a war of attrition. Murga got hurt again. She tried to hide it from me, act as if it were a scratch. But I can tell from the way she carries herself that moving about was more difficult than usual. I suggested relaxing on the beach and watching the sunset, and she agreed immediately. She knows I know. I can see she's tired. This war has taken its toll on all of us, but most especially on Marga. She can't keep going like this. I have to convince our leaders that this isn't the only way. End entry. New entry, Cordelia, personal. Subject, in pursuit of peace. I've done it! I've convinced the elders of the Water Dragon Council to meet with the Magister in Shangtu, my old home. I think both sides expect some kind of duplicity, but I'm not worried. Marga will be with us to provide protection. If anything were to happen to us, she would cut through the country's troops like a hot knife through butter. And I think everyone is well aware of that. I have to go now. The caravan is leaving. Whatever happens next, I hope to free Murga of her role as the Ocean Dweller's champion. It won't be an easy road, but nothing worth doing is. End entry. Murga! You should have run. Let there be no more death today, Murga. This planet should not have to suffer for the sins of my people. Hollow words from a boy who grew up in a palace built on those sins. I know that the Earth Dragons, my people, had enslaved your own. I know of the accidental test fire of Bakunawa's mining laser killing thousands of water dragons in the blink of an eye. All these events and more were excised from history by Earth Dragon hands. I apologize for my complicity through ignorance. You think that a mere apology can erase our suffering? No. And that is why I intend to bring this secret history to light. Tell the world what really happened, and venerate the water dragon's struggle against my people's tyranny. Everyone will know what the Earth Dragons have done. Please, let this world live. <laughs> to be remembered as slaves who rebelled against their masters and lost? Or the monsters that killed the world? What choice do I really have as the one final breath of the Water Dragons? Wait! You don't have to- Murga, no! Stop this! We are the last to suffer under the yoke of the Earth Dragons. This ends here. I was created for battle. You merely play at it. Blue Moon!
collapse.
No, there has to be more. There has to be something else. Play it again! Bring her back! Bring her back! Please, please, I just want to see her one more time. Please. Murga, all of this, is this what she would have wanted for you? Syntax! I thought we blasted her off the ship along with Serpentine! Code Black, version 2 initiated. Termination protocols initiated. Mode harvesting to commence as scheduled. Something's coming this way! How many times are we gonna have to save the moon before it stays saved? Keep up your spirits, Wildcat. Let us put a stop to this. Go. I won't resist. I have much to think about.
creature is regenerating faster than we can damage it. We need to overload the system! Hit it as hard as you can! That worked! Murga? I started this. It's only right that I ended as well. Alright, girls! Let's finish this! Leave me. No! Come with us! We'll find a point! Just don't- ah! Lilac! No! Hold on! I've got you! By the collective efforts of our three kingdoms, the threat of Bakanawa has come to an end. Yet as the moon we defended so passionately fades into the horizon, I cannot help but dwell on the unsettling truth that has been revealed to us. Is punishment enough for conspiracy to silence an entire world? Will an act of forgiveness lead to peaceful resolution? Or will it buckle under the weight of those unwilling to change? Perhaps there is no perfect answer. Nevertheless, I feel it is my duty to pursue an outcome that I believe would break the cycle of conflict that has consumed our world for generations. The atrocities of our past should never be forgotten, but neither should they be repeated. Where... Shang Tu?
Under regular circumstances, our laws would pronounce your deeds to be acts of war, and in the former sergeant's case, treason. Such crimes would be punishable by life in prison, or even death. <coughs> However, these are not regular circumstances. In light of certain facts that have been brought to light, the severity of your punishments will be reduced. I hereby sentence the four of you to six months of community service. You will remain in Shang Tu for the duration of your sentence to clean up the mess caused by your callous disregard for our property. And you better do a good job. Those fossils in the museum ain't gonna rebuild themselves, you know. As you wish. Captain Kalau will do as the Hammer of Justice wills. Well, on the bright side, I guess you get to see me more often, sis. As for your ringleader, we have found neither hide nor tail of Murga in Bacchanal's wreckage. We would have offered her clemency in the same manner as you, but I strongly suspect she would not have cared for an Earth Dragon's ruling. And now I declare this ruling to be concluded. General Gong will hand out your assignments. Nira, may I have a private word with you and your friends? So she's still out there, alone. How fair is Sash Lilac? She hasn't woken up yet. She's strong, though, so I wouldn't be surprised if she's up and about in a day or so. That is good to hear. And thank you, all of you. Once again, the day is saved thanks to your efforts. Pshaw! Saving the world? No worries! Well, actually, Scary Lady here was new to all this, but we showed her the ropes. Yes, however would I have survived without your apt tutelage. See? She even picked up a sense of humor! There is... something else. Now that we are aware of the full facts behind my people's rule and abuse of power, it would be disgraceful to continue as if nothing has changed. Which is why I am stepping down as the leader of Shang Tu. What? No, Magister, you can't! I must. If change is to happen, then it has to come from within. We will take a page from our neighboring city and appoint a new leader through free elections. In the meantime, a regent must be appointed to oversee the proceedings are fair and just. I was hoping that you would fulfill that role, Nira. Me? Uh, what? I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Who's the most honorable person we know who would protect and defend Cheng Tu at all costs? Yeah, and we have the freeze burns and jail time to prove it. Seriously, though, innocent until proven guilty next time? I... I would be honored, but surely there are others just as loyal. Perhaps. But none of them have battled a Water Dragon Centurion on a spaceship that was about to eat the moon. That is both a rare sentence and achievement. In that case, it would be my honor to accept this duty. I will not fail our people, nor leave our lands undefended. Excellent. Then I pronounce you Regent Nira Lee of Shang Tu. Woo! Congratulations, Lady Nira! Yeah, Major Congrats, Scary Lady. I mean, Regent Scary Lady. Thank you. But what will you do now, Magister? There is still so much history lost or hidden away by the Earth Dragons. My intention is to roam the world of Avalis to try and document what remnants may remain. But for now, get some rest, and I shall prepare what duties lie ahead of you as Regent. <laughs> You should be moving around so much. Where are you going? I heard that they never found Murga, so that's what I'm going to do. I think she deserves to know what someone's thinking of her and make sure she's okay. Same old Lilac. Can't you be little Miss Hero Pants some other time? <laughs> Not a chance. Besides, this might be my only chance to find out more about the water dragons, and maybe even something about my parents. Cool. I gotta stay and make sure my sister does all right. Mila and Scary Lady have got their own things going on, too. You gonna be okay by yourself? Of course. Even a falling spaceship isn't enough to stop a dragon. <laughs> Fair enough. Catch you later, Lilac. Catch you later, Carol.
new entry. Hello again, love. It's me, Cordelia. I pray that you'll hear these words somehow, because it will mean that you've been freed from your crystal prison. I know that this isn't all we'd hoped for, and I'm so sorry. What happened to the water dragons was a travesty, and the passage of time has not been kind to their memory. I wish I could be there with you right now. We had so much ahead of us, but I hope that no matter what happens, you'll find your own happiness. And who knows, perhaps we'll even be together again. Someday. But for now, my work isn't over. Not yet. End entry.